Hi, it's Barbara, and welcome to another episode of Can I Recreate It in Elementor? A new series on this channel where I take a look at interesting websites and see if I can recreate certain elements using the Elementor page builder. Today we're going to take a look at Ashley & Co, a New Zealand-based scent and cosmetics company. I really like this website, I think it's nice and simple, I love the minimal design, but what I really thought was cool was how the image swaps from desktop to mobile. See that? Isn't that neat? So I wanted to see if I can recreate this section using the Elementor page builder and see if we can make the images change out on mobile. Before we get started, I am using Elementor Pro for this tutorial. So if you're using the free version of Elementor, there's going to be certain things in this video that you won't see if you don't have Elementor Pro. All right, let's get into it. Let's take a look at this website in more detail so we can see how to structure it in Elementor. This is a pretty simple layout. We have our image on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we have a column with some text and a button. And below that, we have a heading. So I think this will be a relatively simple layout in Elementor. Don't see any problems with the layout really. Now on mobile, let's take a look. I just hit inspect element in Chrome and I'm using the mobile tools to pull up the mobile layout. So as you can see, this image is completely different on mobile. So we're going to have to figure out how to achieve that in Elementor. I think the best approach would be to use the background functionality within the columns in Elementor because I know that you can change the images for the background depending on what size device you're on. So I think that's the best way to go for that. We also have some things that we're going to have to show and hide on mobile. So as you can see, the heading is right here. Then we have the text and then the button. If we go back to our desktop layout, let me just close this out so we can see better. The way this will stack up in Elementor is that we have the image showing first and then underneath the image, we're going to have this text and button. And then underneath that, we will have our heading. So what we're going to have to do is create two headings and show and hide on desktop and mobile so that they show up in the correct spot. And I'll get into more of that a little bit later. But overall, I think that this is a pretty simple structure. I don't think we're going to run into any problems in recreating this. I've opened up a brand new page in Elementor on my testing server. Now it's time to start adding some columns and widgets. I'm going to start by selecting a two column structure and I'm going to change this from box to full width and I'm going to change the columns gap to have no gap. On the left hand side, I'm going to add a spacer. Now you might be wondering why I'm not adding an image. Well, with the image widget, I can't change what the image is between different sizes, but I can change the background image if I set a background image to this column. So that's what I'm going to do. Now I could use the image widget and show hide on different devices, but I think it's a little bit easier to edit if you do it this way, because you won't have to edit multiple things. You just have to edit one area. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to drag over a spacer. Then I'm going to set the VH to let's say 90 because I do want to accommodate for the heading that's gonna go underneath. Now I'm going to go click this column, go to style, and then I'm gonna upload a background image. Now this is for a desktop. So I'm going to select this image that I've previously uploaded. I'm going to just do some changes to the positioning of it. We'll set it to no repeat and we'll set the size to cover. Now let's open our responsive tools. So on tablet, I can actually change this image. You see how there is a tablet icon here. So I can change the image to whatever I want it to be on tablet. So on tablet, let's say I want it to be this image here. I can do the same thing on mobile. So let's go to mobile. And you can see if we click on the column that I can change it here as well. So we have three potential different background images that we can use for different screen sizes. I'm actually going to keep this same image on mobile devices, 
But if we go back to our desktop version, you can see that we have a completely different image versus what we have on tablet and mobile. So that's pretty cool, right? I'm going to adjust this column on desktop version to 68% width. Then I'm going to start dragging over some widgets into this right-hand column. So let me click on that and drag over a text editor widget. We have to add some padding around the edges to give it a little bit more space. So let me go to the column, go to advanced, and let's start with 60 pixels all around. Let's go back to our example. I think we need a little bit more. Let's do 100. Go back to that example again. I think that does look better, but I want to add a little bit more towards the top. So I'm just going to unlink this and we'll do 130. Okay, the next thing that we need to add is a button. So we're gonna go back to our widgets and we'll drag over a button widget. I'm going to change the text so it says shop here. And then I'm just going to style this to look more like the example. So I'll remove the background color and I'll change the text color to black. I'm going to add a border just on the bottom. Remove the border radius and remove the padding. Let's add a little bit of padding to the bottom. And I think that looks pretty good. On hover, I'm just going to change the text color to be a light gray. And the same with the border. Let me actually just copy this and we'll paste it in here. So now when we hover, it's a light gray. I'm going to add a background color to this entire column as well. So let me click on the column, go to style, and let's just add a light bluish gray background that kind of matches a little bit of what we have here. That's not bad. I'm going to copy this because underneath we need to add our heading section. So I'm going to select a one column structure Again, I'm going to make that full width. For the columns gap, I'm going to select wider. And under style, we're going to put in that same background color. Now let's go to our widgets and drag over a heading. We have our heading in here. And I think that this is looking pretty good. We just need to make a couple more adjustments. I think we need a little bit more padding around this because if we go back to our example, it does look like there's some more padding on the left hand side. So let's go back and just add some padding to this widget here. We'll go to advanced and we'll add a little bit to the left hand side. But this is looking pretty nice, I think. I think we have a good layout going on and let's go back to our tablet and mobile versions. So we need to do some work on here. I think we need to adjust this column so that it fits better on tablet. I'm just going to make this 50 and then I'll make this one 50 as well. And let's just play with that and see what happens. I think that's looking a little bit better. I think we can adjust the spacer so that it's not so high. So let's do like 60. I think that looks better. Now let's go to mobile and adjust here as well. So remember, we do need to add our heading up here again. So what we're going to do is click on this section and we're going to go to advanced and hit hide on mobile. Then we're going to go up here and drag over a heading. I will adjust this column as well, but we're going to actually go here, hit advanced and 
hide this on desktop and tablet. So this will only show on mobile and this will be hidden on mobile. So that way we get the correct placement like we had in our example. Let me just adjust this a bit so that there's not so much space around it. But I think we have a nice layout going on here. Let's preview it. As you can see, the layout looks pretty similar to what we have. We just need to make a couple of tweaks and adjustments just to fix some spacing issues, but I think we're good to go. So friends, that's it for today's tutorial. Did I recreate an Elementor? Yes, and I think this one was pretty easy, but hopefully you learned something new. That's always the goal with these tutorials, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you aren't already because we post new videos here every week and we're going to be posting a lot more tutorials like this one in the future, so we'll see you next time.